people like free everything. Like I am uh not in that league of money at all. I uh-huh. I guess I'm a millionaire, uh-huh. but not on. Is that not, your next book? Not liquid. My next book is a priest and a comic walk into a bar. My okay. conversion to Catholicism. Uh huh. Funny take on spirituality. I think. Uh huh. I'm not sure. I think I'm a millionaire. I can only write about shit that right happened to me. Right, me too. But I'm not, you know, like baseball player rich or whatever. But I I will make a million dollars doing comedy if I don't do any TV. Mm-hmm. So that being said, so I won't worry. Huh? I won't worry. I was going to... Yeah, I don't want you to worry about me. All right. But the thing is, when I go to Ralph's, I'll take a case of water and put it under the shopping cart. You know where that little ledge is underneath the shopping cart? And then I'll fill the shopping cart. And when I check out, I know I got that case of free water underneath and they can't see it. And I leave so happy (laughs) that I got free water. Like, (laughs) see, (laughs) I have money. Or, Or how about this? You go to the salad bar. You get yourself a nice soup, like a, a nice beef yeah, yeah, stock yeah. or tomato and rice soup, and you just push your cart and you eat your soup while you're shopping and then just set it down next to the Gatorade and then you just had free soup. Oh, oh. It's a div- it's a perverse pleasure. It's- a guy like you, your whole thing, what I loved in your Kindle single that you wrote about was your fascination with your own invisibility. And you wrote, which I thought was amazing – you used to see the kids that got beat up by the bullies, and you were jealous of them there because was they guy, had attention. Yeah, you know, like and it, one day he was at go. He was he. There was went, a guy, Alan Factor, that used to chase and beat up every day after school. And one day he was absent, and they chased me. They didn't beat me to a pulp, but you know, they chased me and threw me down. And then when he came back, I was sad that I, I missed it. I felt invisible. And in sleepaway camp, there were other guys that got teased, and I felt happy. One year they called me. Galaxy Man, because I was in my own planet from Xenops, and I kind of liked it, yeah. But did you say you were from Xenops? <clears throat> no, they just said, uh, you seem like you're, you're in your own world, and, and they called me Galaxy Man, and I liked it. Hey, you gonna go to Xenops, Fred? Hey, where's your rocket ship, Fred? And, and I, wow, what a bunch of, what sadly, a bunch of, I like that, needed that. I would have liked being called Galaxy. I'm gonna call you Teddy, uh, Freddy Ballgame. When, uh, Freddy, because I bring the game? Because, you know what? I'll tell you why. And you said the story in your uh, Kindle, Kindle single, single with jmore.com no. about your mom saying you can't – school's going to be there whether you show up or not. And you had you had perfect attendance your whole life because it, even if you were she dying, out. blood coming out of every pore because your mother had such neuroses about you missing a single day of school. Yeah. Ted Williams was hitting 400. And on the last day of the season, nobody had hit 400 since like Ty Cobb, like 100 years. Right. And on the last day of the season, the Red Sox played a doubleheader and the manager sat Ted Williams so he could finish the season at 400. And Ted Williams went to the manager and said, what the fuck is this? And wow. he's like, well, you know, you fin-. No, he played, demanded to play. And I think he went six for 10 and his wow. average, I think he finished the season at 406. Wow. Eight for 10. <clears throat> so he's, you're in that way. Wow. Just keep showing up, present, raising your hand, saying, I'm here, and that's why you'll always be in a bellhop suit making a decent living with medical coverage well, and, every, you know, and making independent I movies. I was in, 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 um, <coughs> excuse me, in Atlanta. They flew me there to be in the change up, and I, they cut my lines, and, and for some reason, and all I was doing was handing, um, Ryan Reynolds a gun for his scene within a scene. And then I go here, and the director goes, "No talking, Fred." And I go, and I'm going here. I am, whatever, fifty something, and and just a guy handing Ryan Reynolds. Why a fly gun. someone out to hand a gun? Can't because you get a originally, gun from originally I had a few lines, and then they they did no a reshoot. No talking, Fred. No talking. Jesus, he kept saying, dick. Go, "What the hell is this?" You know, I'm and Craig Bierko, a great guy I work with, go, "Why are you doing this?" You know, you're funny. You should, you know, Craig Bierko. No, he's famous for turning down Chandler and Friends. You should get him on. All right. He said, "I don't want to do it," and uh, and that's his story. He he's in the three. That's Stooges worse movie. than Colin Quinn turning down the son of Doctor Evil and Austin Powers. Get out of here. He did. Oh yeah. He turned on Seth Green's part. And he said it on this podcast. He goes, uh, you know, Mike Myers calls me. He goes, I wrote this for you. It's great. You know, you know, Dr. Evil, I'm going to play Dr. Evil. It's going to be great. And we're probably going to, you know, like, we might do three or four of these. It's going to be like a big franchise. Like, wait, is it a Lost Ark? But we're comedy, you know? And he's like, time travel and the thing. I go, that's really great, Mike. But there's something you're not taking into uh, account. My complete lack of interest. <laughs> but Myers hounded him. 
Oh and my I go to, god! I go. Does that bother you? He goes. Of course it bothers me. <laughs> it starts biting his finger. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, he uh, he turned down Chandler. I think his agent said you don't want to be part of an ensemble. You know, you want your own thing. What is a set of Wizards of Waverly Place like? It was. I I've was, seen uh, probably fifty episodes. I tell you, so and I don't know why the Deloise guy has all Mexican children. Oh, <laughs> well, actually, he got a blonde father, well, and all his kids are named. What is that? It, it, it actually should be a show because the parents, the actors were 20 times more neurotic and the kids were so together. Selena Gomez couldn't be more down to earth. Actually, I was voyeuring her, her iPhone because you'd see a, a text message come and you see Justin and she reads a text message and she's shaking her head and, and her friends, you know, going, don't Turns read. out it's Justin Upton from the Minnesota Twins. <laughs> she gets around it. Is she of age? Um, I don't know. Oh, I, don't I don't know. Want to but say she was anything really worried about a minor. She was really down to earth. She was like, uh, that's rare for a kid actor to be. Yeah, down to earth. yeah. And her fingers were bleeding because her iPhone dropped and the, the thing cracked. And I said, get get it fixed. Oh, that's six hundred dollars. I want to go to your Aruba next week. I go. I'll go to the Apple Store. You don't have to pay that. And she's still. Oh, Selena Gomez. Yeah. No, she's not of age. She, her and Justin Bieber are still a couple. Yeah. And, but I, but it was, I was voyeuring seeing the name Justin pop well, up I on her too. Did you ever meet the Biebs? Did he ever come by? No, but someone friended me on Facebook saying he's Justin Bieber and, 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 cause she, and but I don't know. Um, probably not. No, <laughs> no, but with the fake name, but she was, uh, they're really, and, uh, yeah, what's his name? DeLuise is kind of neurotic and, the and, the yeah, the, the, the mother, but the kids were really, uh, yeah, yeah down to earth. Your mother, uh, your father didn't speak much. No, he, I think. He, was he be just beaten down? You know. What was his job? He, he was very artistic. He designed commercial displays that were in department stores. I don't know if it was. Would, that's either. a job I would, that's a job I would love to be doing after smoking tons of pot. Smoke a ton of grass and you do commercial displays. Yeah. I'm being serious. Really? He, like that's something you really get into, stoned. Or like those people that do the window dressing at like Macy's, get fucking ripped high I don't know if he and did. make that fantasy world. He and people actually, watch you because you're in the window. In the garage, he'd make a fantasy world of trains with, remember HO trains with like the, uh, you know, the villages and yeah. the, the mountains. He, I think he may have had what's that, Asperger's because he, he didn't really talk much and is very creative. And, and also he was in World War II. Some thinks he was shell shocked. He was in Anzio. Do you know much about that stuff? No. Uh, history, but. World War II, I've heard of, yeah. <laughs> Whereas George Goebbels said, you know, you know World War II, Johnny. He was in all the papers. <laughs> and your mom was very domineering. Oh, she was like, Morris, say something. Morris, why am I the bad one? Morris. And I'm going, yeah, you are the bad one. He was. What did your mom say? Fred Cohen will love this. Open the lemonade stand. This oh, she goes, what if it goes under? <laughs> you know? <laughs> That and is so fucking funny. She really said to me, I wanted to get a job at Burger King. She goes, yeah, they're waiting for you. You know, <laughs> like you so, got to go to stand up. You know, it's hard because you can't dabble. I'll get laughs here. Then you go if to a I club. Do, if I do a club date like Irvine, Brea or Ontario, would you come out and do time or would that be too like shell shock? I would try to, but I'm so out of the loop. But so what? I mean, but it'd be yeah, my it, audience and I'd be yes. like, they'd know you from the podcast. But yes. would you, would it be worth, but it would, would it, be, and I'm being totally sure. honest, would it be worth the angst it would cause you? You know, I did it a few years ago to see if I missed it. But, um, I think to me the angst is like, like, you know, the comedy and magic shop, right? Yeah. I, I like comics individually when they're hanging out, they're walking around, like, like your thing with, um, Last Comic Standing. I watch it and I got nervous. Yeah. But I liked watching it and getting the flashbacks. Um, but my shows, just so you know, I only do two guys' shows. I hate having an MC. Uh huh. Because the guy that's the least funny that you're there to see the least goes on stage the most. He goes up first, and you're like, "Whoa, who's this guy?" We came to see, you know. So wait, how long do the other guys do? Opening act is twenty minutes, and then do like an hour and ten. I would love to, but I'm so out of the loop. No, I'm I not mean, saying I, you go like out 20. in the cold, do twenty. I'm saying a guy does twenty. I go up and I go. This is my friend Fred. Yeah, because I would be love because you're so funny. I'm funny conversationally, but but in a crowd. Like, I'll give you an example. I did this TV movie years ago, set in a comedy club, and it was so god awful. It's the unfunnest thing playing a comedian in a TV movie because all you do is sit at the bar and, and and there's extras background and we're talking. And then there was a scene where I had to do my act for the extras, 
and they're not laughing because I'm following not Carlos Mencia, um, this guy Pablo Francesco. Is that his oh, name? Oh, he's hard to follow. <laughs> and then in a world, in a man. world, pull my baby. Don't talk to me like you know and me. And then I get up there, and there, and and I'm bombing in front of extras, and I I had to say to the director, why don't you tell them I get into the Espen comedy show in the movie within the you know the the story within the story yeah. that they or should laugh. Or why do you why do you as the assistant director who makes the board say <laughs> we're going to have Pablo go on last? Right. Fred will go up first, and then Pablo will close with the sound effects and his crazy act, crazy good, crazy. He's, he kills. You know what you just said? That you're awful, which is so great. Reminds me of one time some guy. I think he owns the I get the ice the ice house. Right. He goes. You know to see what it's like being a comic on the road. I went with so and so. And I uh, did a few minutes, and my friend goes, wrong. If you want to see what it's like being a comic on the road, call for six months. They don't return your calls. And then you have to do it because, you know what I mean? Yeah. Yeah. There is no living vicariously through a comic. Yeah. The only way out is through. Maybe we could do in Ontario uh, April 26th through 29th. So I hope you guys can get tickets and come see me there. I'm trying to save you guys the amount of commercials at the front of the show so I could just drop it in here. Come see me at the Ontario Mills Improv, April 26th to 29th. Maybe we could do a show. I'll do my show and I'll like, you know, two shows Friday or whatever. And then maybe after that, we could do sit down and do a podcast. Love that. In front of like 50 or 60 or 100 people. Oh, that'd be, yeah. And I'll bring another guy so you're not like the only one that feels like obliged to talk see, to my, you. My goal before Andy Dick became crazy was. You make money, you're on a show like News Radio, then you talk conversationally on panel. Yeah. Yeah. But you did Letterman. Yeah. And you did well on Letterman. Mm, twice. I did it the night the space shuttle blew up. So they were <laughs> kind of depressed. It's true. <laughs> oh, my God. <laughs> did you know the space shuttle had blown up? Yeah, yeah. Well, uh, yeah, I actually didn't know. They called me. They said, could you get there? Because the, the audience canceled. know? I think they were aware. There was uh, in, why was there debris in the Ed Sullivan Theater? <laughs> oh no, no, this was the first <laughs> Letterman the before lunar Ed module <laughs> just disintegrated. No, 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 the balcony. No, because it, it they shoot around five, so all day long they're showing the shuttle blowing up and stuff. You know, so hey, how about that space shuttle? I <laughs> got hey, you feed the dog, I'll feed the they fish. They called me up, ladies and gentlemen. They said, "Can you get down?" People canceled, but still want to go on. So I had to do my act in the office. And they had to say nothing sad because today's a sad day. And I, they said, you can't do that. That's sad. And I did a joke about Superman or something. So then um, so Letterman comes out. He goes, I don't mean to be irreverent. We're going to try to get through the show. Anyways. Letterman came and spoke to you. No, no, no. He said it to the audience. Oh, okay. That was his opening. It's a sad day in American history. We're going to do the show anyway. Fred stole it. No. I mean, but, but <laughs> he didn't well save me right away. But yeah. So they Who knew. else was on the show? Do you remember? Um. There was a I'm black trying, woman, and it's I'm not... I'm trying to feed into your... Was it CCH Pounder? <laughs> I'm trying to feed into your dementia, but I just keep asking you dates and names until you go crazy. Um, I actually remember it was uh, John Cleese, I think. Um, you... Uh, and it never is, got rerun. I'm thinking, being so selfish, going, this isn't going to be in TV Guide, last moment. I'm not going to get a rerun check. What's this going to do for me? That's what's going through your yeah. mind at the time, as opposed yeah. to if I kill on Letterman, it'll do well for me. I didn't kill because they were depressed. But the other was that the first time or second time? It's second and last. Yeah, I never did again. Well, that you quit comedy in all fairness. Yeah, no, I yeah, but don't act like you didn't get called back because your set was bad. You tapped out of the business. I they they wanted to see me do Letterman the set again. And I kind of grew as a person. They said, we liked it when you were weirder. Because I used to have my head down and make nooses with the mic stand. Then I came, became more of a person. I grew up in comedy clubs. You got the med- The medication was right. Yeah. And I would just I Speak talk. to someone who's on medication. Yeah. When the meds are right, life is fucking good. Yeah. Sometimes know. a rainy day is just a rainy day <laughs> to be enjoyed. Oh, yeah. A rainy day. Taxi cab. A rainy day. Listen, one of the reasons... This is the biggest... The, the reason I called you initially is because I was listening to someone else's podcast. Chris Rock was on. He was hanging out with Eddie Murphy. Yes. And Eddie Murphy is so far gone and he still thinks like longingly about the days when he was just a cop. I did his last gig with him in That's Fort Lauderdale. That's what he said is he asked Chris Rock. And What's this, Fred Stoller up to? What's that Fred Stoller up to? And Chris Rock goes, Fred? Fred? Is that the comic strip? I don't know. Fred's just Fred. 
He but always the goes, fact, what's French Stola? So, the, now, so you're the guy. Two weeks in, it's, there's last b- Baskin of, yeah, two weeks in Fort Lauderdale and sharing a condo. Me, him, and Rob Bartlett. Do you know you, Rob Bartlett? Of course, from Don Imus. My Rob, hero, my, 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 uh, my, Don Imus is my biological father. That was my Seinfeld. Um, <laughs> what's the deal with Don Imus? Uh, Don Imus, who I adore, Rob Bartlett, who's on Broadway constantly. Like oh, they yeah.